All right. Uh, for some reason, the audio is quieter than usual. Oh, which is probably because of that. Yeah. So now hopefully it's fixed because last time I had to fix it in post processing. Anyway, so now it's time to implement type specific placing. So for example, chairs should have a seat, which right now it just prints out the coordinates of the seat. And we need to actually add them right now. I can't even place them. So let's let's work on that. So what I can actually do is say summon an interaction. It's going to have a tag. Which is going to be a seat. Now you can see that it will not actually kill this entity, unfortunately. We want to ass assign a unique ID to this thing, so we'll just say execute store result. We'll copy this selector. Score this entity ID. Run scoreboard. Players add ID. One. Then kill itself. So now if I reload, you can see that it's actually copied over now. So it means that it's going to remove. And it's important is that these blue lines always face the same, uh, same direction, which means that you're gonna see it properly. And of course, we need to actually make so that you can sit on it. Of course, the type should be interaction. Now, there should be also a condition for the player. So player should be not sitting. And for this, I just need to say inverted. So if this player has a vehicle of interaction, then it cannot sit on it. This looks good. So I'm gonna have a type. In this case, interaction, and of course, the tag security. In this case, it's going to be seat. Yeah, you can see that I can now actually seat now. And the height of the seat can be adjusted, but I think it's pretty good for this particular block. Now let's try something like an acacia stool. It's also pretty good. I think I can make it a bit higher. So the way I'm going to do this is just say it's tool. And in here I have the height. I can just change it to be something like six, which of course I need to, I need, I have to re give it to myself. So otherwise it's not going to work, but yeah, now it's higher. You can see it and it looks pretty good. Now I need now the problem is that you can actually barely be able to hit hit the block. I think I can fix that. Over here, if I change height to be something much smaller, so now if I, if I place it again, this time I can, I can actually break this block from the top view. Now it's time for the shelves. Right, so now if I place it, you can see that it's it's looks like it's good right this top shelf should probably be smaller but it doesn't really matter now also the cupboard needs the cupboard needs a brightness fix which is again in this code is so easy to just modify everything without having to do much work at all at all So I just do this and now it's perfect. I guess I try again. So I put, place the pile, I take this, this works. I cannot place, now I can. This works, this works, okay. Perfect. And of course check that the shelf also works. If I place a shelf, I can place things and they look pretty nice. So this part is finished as well, which again, which is hard. It's hard to break it. 
but it is possible. Now another one that there is is a light, which I think is going to be the easiest one to implement. Because all the light needs is to place this, this block, and that's pretty much all. Now the problem is that I can't even place it right now. And the reason being is that it has no base, so if we go over to tags, we have this no base tag. Let's execute if s s and then check that it has block or uses no base. Make sure that it doesn't have this tag. Which the way I'm gonna do is just summon a local base with height one, response one, then copy the ID and add new meaning that i don't actually need this part so now i can place it again and you can see that it actually does work so i can set time set night uh, and it doesn't break uh, which is bad but all i have to do is just set block air right so now if i place it i can now break it Perfect, it doesn't break other blocks, which is good. I guess this is good for now.